Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. This morning, I'll, I'll, I'll take it slow intentionally. Over the next few weeks or so, you know, I told you already that um, in the year, we have a lot to unpack. How I many remember I said that? We have a lot to unpack. I'm telling you the truth, a lot to unpack. And uh, sometimes I just say, Lord, you know what? I'm not going to... I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm just going to listen for your voice. And um, whatever you say, however you want us to do it, we will go for it. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so uh, let me just remind you that in the presence of God, there is the fullness of joy, okay? Uh, some of you are looking at me like you're about to run up on me and take this mic from me and just give me a beating. Okay, relax. It's church, okay? I'm not coming for you, okay? I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be in your face. Maybe I might be. I might be. But look at the person sitting next to you. Give them a smile. Give them a smile. Amen. Amen. Not, not, not that kind of smile they give in the UK where they just, you know, they just grimace and just go. It vanishes as quickly as it comes. Do you know that smile? <laughs> not that type, okay? A kind smile. Very kind smile. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Glory. The devil is in trouble. And the reason he's in trouble because our confidence is not without foundation. And so we know that he's in trouble because of what supports us. Oh, you didn't hear me. I, I, just that alone was enough to go into your week. You know, the, the reason we make noise sometimes, the devil sometimes thinks that we, you know, have you met people who, 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 who back more than they bite? They know how to make mouth. They know how to make mouth. But with us, when Livingston Assembly is gathered and uh, when, when we are postured like this to listen and to receive from the Lord, the devil knows he's in trouble. He knows he's in trouble. And I please would ask that you participate today. Amen. I'm starting something new today, but it's not away from the book of Mark chapter 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many people are camping with me in Mark chapter 4 for the whole of 2024? The whole of 2024. I will so feed you with Mark chapter 4 until it's coming out of your nostrils. <laughs> Don't you, you sing the song to God so I can say it to you. You say, bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Isn't that what you say to him? When I sing it, I'm like, Lord, no, don't feel me till I want no more. Feel me until I know that there is more to be had. Because if you want no more, then you, you are happy to go by yourself. Praise the Lord Jesus. And then the finished work of the, of the cross of Calvary won't be complete in you. Amen. Amen. So Mark chapter 4, please. <laughs> Mark chapter 4. I don't know if I should read the whole chapter or maybe just for time. Let me for time. I won't read the whole chapter. I will touch on a few verses of it, but that's my main text this afternoon. Look at somebody say, Mark chapter 4. Amen. Amen. There's a one called Mark 4, right? Is it Mark 4 or Mark 5? Those that know about guns and weapons. Is there a gun called Mark 4? Mark 4, right? Uh -huh. So, Mark 4. Amen. And so, maybe we can, we can borrow from there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, last week last week so i can connect dots and make sure that we are all on the same page last week we we had a vision sunday and uh, we prayed over the things that we're expecting god to do for us is that true yes, sir. we prayed over all that god has you know given us reason to expect and to envision and to you know have an image impressed upon our spirits that he is in the business of bringing those things to pass if you have that sort of thing for 2024 please switch your hand up Amen. And remember I told you that you will get nothing if you expect nothing. Praise the Lord Jesus. As a matter of fact, when I left last Sunday, you know, the, the Lord began to deal with me on a few things about my own personal life. And said, you know why you haven't seen me is because you're not acting like you're expecting me. And then I've told the story before here. My very first pastor, when I was a young boy, I think I was about seven or eight then. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I was above 11 or so. I can't remember exactly. This was exactly 1988. I think I was about t 10 years old or so, 10 or 11. And my first pastor then, I remember that he, he played this thing with me and it has stayed with me since then as a little boy. And so he just got married and I love him so much. His name is Francis. He's late now. His name is late now, but um, 
He was he was my first pastor. Was the first person I called pastor, you know. And um, he was a dear friend to my parents and our family. And so he he sort of like taught me everything I know from the Word of God. I think I will actually say that he laid the foundation for it because at that time he began to teach a lot of things and. There were things that I could assent to mentally, but it was later on I understood. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Okay, uh, when, you, when you're having fun, you enjoy the music, but when you're in trouble, you understand the lyrics. That's the way it happens. So, and then when I was growing up and he just got married, so I went to his house one day. So I got into his house and I said, oh, pastor, I can see you have space here. What's, what's there? He said, what, what's that space for? He said, oh, I'm pregnant. And so I looked at him and thought to myself, pregnant men don't get pregnant do they and he said i'm pregnant and i said so what are you pregnant with he said what would be in that space is what i'm pregnant with i said what is that he says my refrigerator now in case you're wondering i know in the uk you don't believe god for re refrigerator okay <laughs> but if you were born in zonkwa like i was and you lived in northern nigeria and uh, you understand the heat even just the heat associated with Nigeria alone and Africa, you will know that having a refrigerator and one that works is a miracle. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. So he said, that's for my refrigerator and I'm expecting for it to come. And I said, where is it? Have you paid for it or anything? He said, no, I'm pregnant with it. Oh, that confused me the more. And I thought, so what do you mean you're pregnant with it? He said, because when God wants to give you something, he gives you a seed first. And so I have taken the seed and I've swallowed it and now I'm pregnant. When it is ready to come, I will bring forth like a woman bringing forth. And that's what we did last Sunday. We sort of like took our seeds and uh, I don't know about you, but come September, check me out. If it's about the time of life, don't wish for me to have more children, okay? But... <laughs> If it's just according to the time of life, I had to look away from my wife in that sense so that uh, she doesn't, <laughs> so her eyes don't meet and then there's no quarrel in pastor's house after church. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. But if it's according to the time of life, in nine months then, come check us out. Oh, how many are expecting children here? If you're expecting children, in nine months time, we'll come, we'll come, we'll come rejoice with you. Amen. And so, you've, you, you've taken in, you've taken in, and that's what we did last week, isn't it? We produced an image, you know, on that session of vision. And um, now I want us to go into the language that is associated. That language will help you print in, in 4D or 5D, in 3D. Not just the image that you have on, on your fridge, but how it actually ends up in... Oh, come on, someone, if you expect, and put your hand out. Amen. Amen. And the reason for this is simple. It is spiritual things that answer natural things. Look at your neighbors. It's spiritual things answer natural things. Amen. Please make sure you're writing, okay? Make sure you're writing. I, I, I think I should make it a rule if you're in church on Sunday. Make sure you're writing because seeds are falling now. Seeds are falling now. And I, I have a lot to unpack to you, but I'll take it slow and just go as quickly as I can for this session. And so... I'm starting something new today, and spiritual things make natural things happen. Amen. 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 Please, I need you to join me, okay? Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I want you to look at your neighbor so that I can give you the title of what I'm talking about. Then I'll read a few verses from Mark chapter 4 and just go straight into it. From the onset, I'll be throwing things at you. I hope you didn't come with a straw. I hope you came with your fork and knife and you came ready to chew meat that you also have to send. You know, when you go to Fazenda, there's this meat they give you, the type that you chew and then you're like, okay, I'm tired of chewing and you'll swallow it. <laughs> That's the type of meat you're taking home from church today, okay? So it's not, the, it's not the soft one. I know some of you like soft meat, but it's not soft meat today. Praise the Lord Jesus. But look at your neighbor again because you're going to say something to your neighbor and I, I need for that to hit them like a ton of bricks. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, grow or go. Look at the next person say grow or go. Find somebody else behind you. Look at them and say look them in the eye. Really look them in the eye. Say grow or go. <laughs> uh, find the person that maybe you, you, are, you and them, you don't, things don't, don't work very well. When, when they see you, they avoid you. I, I, I give you permission. Leave your seat now. Just leave your seat. Find that person that you know that is always giving you a reason to go back to what you don't want to go back to. And look at that person and say, grow, grow. or go. Okay. <laughs> now you get the message now. Amen. 
praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And I will explain what that means um, because um, we know, we know. Okay, there's, there, there's, there's another statement to it. Oh, yes, this is good. Can you read on the screen? Can you? If you can't, let me read it to you from here. If God's word cannot shape you, it is an occasional snack. Look at your neighbor and say, if God's word... Oh, I need people who have faith in this place. Where's the amen corner? Where are the people who are ready to say amen? Amen. Okay. For those who are watching for the first time, sir, I preach to where the love is. That's where I preach. Where the love is, I preach in that direction. When I sense the love coming from somewhere else, say it starts depleting from here, then I go to the, the next place. So is this the place where the love is? Okay. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> and so look at your neighbor and say, if God's word can't change you, it is an occasional snack. So grow or go. Amen. There are two possibilities always in life. There are two possibilities every time in life. And that possibilities are on this wise. Either you are growing, and just in case you're thinking that maybe I'm saying go. If it sounds rude, that's not exactly what I mean. Here's what I mean by go. It's either you're growing or you're expiring. That's going. Or you're dying. That's going. Amen. Amen. Don't you hear when people die, they say he's gone. Mm. Is it not true? Yes, he's gone. Amen. Or you're decreasing. You either grow or you decrease. You either grow or you decline. Or you decline. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so Mark chapter 4 verse 15. I'll take a few verses and I'll begin to just unpack what I have here. Mark chapter 4 verse 15. It says... Just one statement, it says, is the same thing that Luke, Mark chapter 4, verse 15. Amen. Can you give it to me in the modern English translation? If you have it, you don't have it. Okay. <laughs> you don't have it. Do you have a new international version? If you don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Because I saw that I was like, oh, that's a big statement. But my version says it's one statement. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mark 4, 15 says, the sower. Please listen. Mark 4, 15. It's a very simple memory verse. You can actually go home today, write it on a flashcard, put it in front of your fridge, and put it anywhere. It says, the sower sows the word. In Luke 8, 11, it says, the seed is the word. The seed is the word. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you still here? And like a woman is pregnant, we all carry seeds in our heart. We all carry seeds in our heart. I've been teaching from Mark 4. I've been telling you about the different types of soils. Amen. Those who understand and have been following. Is that true? And like a woman who's pregnant, the seed you carry in your heart becomes what grows and gives shape to your life. That becomes what grows and gives shape to your life. You cannot blame another for what grows within you. You can't. It's impossible to blame another person for what has been growing in you. Because whatever grew in you is what you allowed to be planted and sown in you. Is that correct? Good. I like the way it's quiet now. And so, listen to this. The diet you digest is your responsibility. The diet you digest is your responsibility. And can I just touch on this a bit more? Because we live in an age, and the reason I'm saying this is because I want you all to be careful. Just because something is posted on, so on social media doesn't mean it's for your consumption. Doesn't mean. And I, I really need for you to be very intentional about 2024. If there's any year you should be very intentional, it's about 2024. My wife knows me very well. If I don't want to have to do, any, to do anything to do with anything, don't show it to me. And so there are times she will say, come and see babes. I'm like... Not interested. Not arrogance. Not anything. Why? You know, I heard Dickens say it yesterday. The quickest way to dispossess a man of the vision he has is to give him another. Because the moment I see it, I can't unsee it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I can't. And so when I'm, when I'm sharp in focus and I'm looking at something, if someone is trying to call my attention to something, I'm like, no, I didn't see that. I won't see it. I will just set my, my, my face like a flint. The Bible says... And just turn my neck in one direction and say, that's all I've seen. 
That's all I'm saying. Praise the Lord Jesus. And because these days we consume a lot from social media, we consume a lot from social media. Don't think that you're the only one. When I say this, you, you, I mean, in a day, I send my wife about the average of, just because in church I don't like flooding people's timelines or anything, you know, but average of maybe 15, 15 to 20, okay, maybe in a week, in a week, yeah, in a week, because I see things that are funny to me, and I'm, 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 I'm comical. If, if you know me, uh, if you're close to me, you will know. I'm not always all serious and all that. You know, I play a lot. And so I see things. <laughs> yeah, I just remember the one we watched yesterday. <laughs> oh, God, don't go away, go away. You see what I told you? I said, that's why I don't see, I don't like seeing some things, because it's hard to unsee it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Anybody saw that one? Chemo is now one Tajan. Anybody saw it? Egala, <laughs> Egala accent. Did anybody see that? You didn't see that? I'll share it with you. Oh, God. <laughs> Praise God. The guy was applying for a job, and they said, the guy said to him, I'm going to have you read a script. And the criteria for the job is that I want to make sure you don't have a gala accent. I don't, I'm, I'm not a gala, so please, I'm sorry if you're a gala and maybe this relates to you. So when he started reading, he, he got to employ a point. <laughs> <laughs> and he said things like, <laughs> because the dollar has increased. <laughs> he said, Chemo is now 1,000. <laughs> oh, God. And so... What got me into this? Because we digest a lot of things now from around us. A lot of things uh, in the media, on YouTube. You can't open Facebook, YouTube. Even just you minding yourself and going to Google. Or Yahoo. Or what's, the, what's that one called? Bing. Edge, Bing, or whatever. You just see one thing pop up at you and all that. And what I'm trying to just lay emphasis on by reason of saying that as far as your spiritual growth is concerned, because this is what this teaching is all about. I'm going to, over the next couple of weeks, begin to show you things that, ha that really matter to your spiritual advancement and things you have to unlearn. Things you have to unlearn. And please hear me, Livingston Assembly, when I say that these things are present in church, I have seen it in church in here, and I have noticed it too in the body of Christ at large. In the body of Christ at large. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so just because it's posted doesn't mean it's for your consumption. It's not yours to eat because anyone else is eating it. It's not yours to eat because anyone is eating it. And I'm laying the foundation by saying some of these things. They might, they might sound like they are big statements or anything, but please just let them you know, go into your heart and into your spirit. And I taught you how that works because for those who don't come to Wednesday service, I explained that don't assume that as I'm saying this now, it's entering your spirit. It's entering your head. It's your head is entering too. And then by reason of your intellectual capacity, how much God has blessed you with and how much you have exercised. You know, that's why Jesus in Mark 4, he says, be careful with the measure you hear. Uh, did, you, did you see that in Mark chapter 4? He says, be careful with the measure you hear because I can be hearing with a shovel. So it means that what? The seeds that are there for all of us, some of you are here with teaspoons. That's the measure you're hearing with. Or if I put it in the context and say it's like water. Some are here with just glass cups. And they just go and say, bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Meanwhile, the space they've made is very tiny. And they say, my cup is full. There is nothing else for you to do. But someone comes and he has a big gallon. And while you're saying my cup is full, he's saying, I need more, more more the measure the measure is different for everybody the measure and that's why i want you to get these things the menu for your spiritual growth should have a home look at your neighbor say this the menu for your spiritual growth should have a home oh god look at them kindly now and say eat at home eat at home Stop searching for food from any table imaginable in the name of spiritual growth. Let me tell you something about my spiritual discipline. And so when I go on YouTube and say I want to watch something, I'm going for a recipe. I'm not going to eat. It will be enjoyed as a meal. 
But how many people see things that someone cooks, a recipe, a video, you know? I swear now with our fasting, I, I see it a lot. I open up Instagram, and all I'm seeing is my neighbor, uh -huh. they'll put onions, they'll put meat, I'm like, just go away. <laughs> and I had to say to my wife, I was like, is it that these guys are here, you know, so in some sense? Anybody been there before? All I see is food now. Food, 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 food. To the point that you now start planning after they fast. <laughs> after they fast. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's for those who are fasting. I know that not everyone is fasting and um, uh, some of you are eating because of your medical condition or something like that, but it's a hard thing to deal with. And um, please, but don't feel, don't feel offended by it. If you don't get hungry when you're fasting, then why are you fasting? If you don't get hungry. Last night I was walking to go and do the study for service today. I was just walking past the kitchen, minding my business and just going straight because you have to go through the kitchen to go to the garage in my house and that's where I have my desk, you know. You know, I was looking at my garage today. Sorry, I'm saying this publicly, but I said, this is the part that makes the most money in this house. It shouldn't be like this. <laughs> Amen. You know, the Niger Delta people, they said, ah, you make all the money in Nigeria from here, but you go and use it and develop Abuja. And so I make the money in the garage. Brokule, please, you have to come very quickly. I make the money in the garage and then I go and de decorate the living room decorate the other places and then the kids will go there and be having fun and i come to the garage i'm like ah, this doesn't feel right and so i was on my way to the garage last night and then i saw meat pies and things and chicken wings and plantain and you know it's when you're fasting that's when anything anything becomes food to you even jacket potato suddenly, suddenly becomes interesting amen and so I was passing and I looked at them and I said, I'm just going to mind my business. Amen. And I was tempted. But that's how you know you're fasting. That's how your sacrifice is worth something. That's how you know that you are refusing something because of what you know you are going to get. Isn't it? When you're digging for gold, you don't, you don't mind the cost of the shovel that you're digging with. Because you know that if, let's say, let's start digging now and say, there is gold worth $10 billion under this building. And you start digging and your shovel goes bad what will happen you go and sell your car and come back with a new shovel and continue digging because you know what you're looking for praise the lord jesus and this is why i'm laying emphasis on this the menu for your spiritual growth should have a home it should have a home and i'll show you some of these things from the scripture not today not today because i haven't got that time today today is just foundation i'm laying and then we'll go into other things and so when I go on YouTube or when I go on um, any minister's website, you know, we all have ministers we like to watch, and I'm not against that or anything. But please don't go there and think that you have spiritually grown. You have not spiritually grown because you have listened to a message. You know, many times we like to have the, um, the analysis of a message. And so I can sit down with you now and we analyze a message together. And we will bring out everything that the author or the speaker of the message was even bringing out. And even things that he didn't even touch on. Even some of you who, who are very good with the study of the word of God. The truth is, even as I'm talking now, the Holy Spirit is already taking you on a journey to the place where he needs you to pay attention to. Because he is a master communicator. So what he's doing is that as seeds are being sown, he's making sure that he paints the picture for you in the way that it will get your interest into what he has for you. For as our faces are different, so as our journeys and so as our needs, isn't it? And so when you are exposed to the teaching of God's word, you are getting a recipe. Why did I call it a recipe? Because you will need to be able to replay it at home. You will need to be able to replicate it at home. You cannot say that you know how to cook mac and cheese by watching someone on YouTube do it. How you know you cook mac and cheese or isiewu or whatever it is as your delicacy that you, you like, how you know you can cook it is when you can bring out your own ingredients, whip it up from scratch, cook it, serve it, eat it. Then you can say, I can cook it. Is that true? And so, because of that, you must be careful. Please listen to this. I mean, I want to write it down. Be careful of content without community. There's a lot of it out there now. 
there is content and there is no community. We don't have fake plans in this church, but if we did, there used to be one here. I don't know where you guys, you don't bring it out anymore. Okay. Fake plans. The reason when, when, why we have live plants in church is because my personal preference, I don't like plastic plants. Because they're like that fig tree. Jesus thought that they had fruit. And there are many people who spew content online and they are like plastic plants. And so someone sits down and says, so and so online is my pastor. But you've never seen him. You've never been with him. You've never sat down with him. You don't know his fruits. You're seeing him from afar. You're seeing him from afar. And so you sit down and the pandemic sort of like released a new generation of Christians, the unpersuaded, I call them. That is the pandemic that we're enduring now. I call it the pandemic of the unpersuaded. COVID came and left and then the unpersuaded emerged. That's the new variant. The unpersuaded people. And so they, they don't go to church. They go to church online. They sit at home and they watch online. They send offering online. They do everything online. Everything is virtual. When they say shout, as we say shout, they'll just do one. Hee! Or they'll type uh, an emoji online. And Jesus in heaven will just say, ah, my emoji blood that I died for you with. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Why? Because you can't have content without community. The Christian faith is not like that. The Christian faith is a communal faith. It's a faith of assembling themselves. Book of Acts, we read it this morning, isn't it? Is a faith of what they went together to the brethren. Is a faith of authenticity. Authenticity. Oh, oh, please help me. Authenticity. Say it again. Authenticity. 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 I, I find it hard to say it. So you said it for me now. Praise God. You see why I preach the love, okay? Amen. And so the new believers, they were thousands. They were thousands. But they met at home. Peter did not say, find me a building. You know, or as Barnabas saw the land, he said, Peter would just feel and say, you know what, I think we should buy a building. 10,000 sita. Let's show Herod that this temple he has is a small one. Like pastor said during Sunday school, I'm not against mega churches. What actually, what actually makes a church mega is the authentic nature of the salvation in the church. Not the structure of the building. Not the programs they have in the community. Not the amount of money they have to splash about. None of those can replace the authentic nature of the relationships. What's it again? Authenticity. authenticity. Say it again. Authenticity. authenticity. Uh -huh. I got it now. Amen. Clap for me. Oh, come on, somebody. Authenticity. Amen. I got it now. Amen. Amen. I know you're all there too. Yeah, you're, you're saying, Pastor, ah, I thought you are a man with words. If I give you a microphone now, <laughs> there was a guy I knew in school. His own was Nebuchadnezzar. And, when, when he could say, and, the, and, and the Lord said to Nebu, Nebu. <laughs> Nebu. <laughs> Let me leave that alone. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Oh, God, I don't know the bug that's beating me today. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful that I'm just introducing, so I'm not, taking, I'm not going to take your time. Trust me. Amen. Even if we close here now, we've had church, haven't we? Amen. And so, your spiritual content must have community because growth must be at home. There are times I want to go places and I eat at home before I go there. And I get there and they serve me the food. I can accept it. Or I can say, give me take away, and I'll take it home. But nothing replaces the food at home. Nothing. Nothing replaces the food at home. And my wife cooks very well, so it even makes it even all the more interesting. And so if I come to your house and I say, bro, lucky I'm in your house, and then you give me food and all that, I will reserve space for Mrs. Francis so when I get home. I have to. You do the same for Sister TV. Isn't, this, isn't it? And many believers don't eat at home anymore. They don't eat at home anymore. And we're in 2024, and they're saying, Chemo is one thousand. And they think... <laughs> oh, God. And they want to grow. And they want to be soils that can receive seeds and grow a fruitful harvest. 
Okay, forget that I'm laughing and some of these things are sounding funny. And no, it's not. But the truth is that if you don't eat at home, how will you, how will you grow the fruit that you need? How will you produce? Now, write this down. I, I, I know I'll get to it. The seed is powerful. Write this down. The seed is powerful. But the secret is the soil. The secret of every seed. It's not just that the seed is powerful. Seed will grow anywhere. But what makes a seed grow is the soil. Is the soil. And in Mark 4, we saw an example. I'll get back to what I'm saying, but let me just explain it a bit further. In Mark 4, we saw an example. Jesus was speaking, and when he was explaining the parable to them, he began to say, these are the type of soils we have. Is that correct? And uh, can I just please flag it up for your attention and just drop it there in your consciousness. Don't also see that as just types of soils. Those are also types of responses. And so, like I was saying on Wednesday, there are times the Lord will speak to you and your response is by the wayside. So there's no soil for that word to come into. There's no, even those, those type of prayers, they are the type, you know, someone said to me, he says, is the truth that sets a man free that he doesn't want to hear? Have you met people like that? The truth that will set them free, they don't want to hear it. The moment you say it near them, the next thing is that they are running from you. They are running from you. They are running from you. You call them on the phone, they will, they will miss your calls. You will talk to them, they'll be, they'll be nodding. And I've met a few of them. They'll be nodding and telling you, Pastor, from today. <laughs> I nearly said that thing again. <laughs> from today, that they're like, it's, it's going to be different. But in my heart, I just know they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Praise the Lord Jesus. The seed is powerful, but the secret is in the soil. And so, what happens is that your response can either be by the wayside, or your response can be rocky. That means you have more excuses than God is asking you to make room for. God is saying, I'm going to move in your midst in 2024. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And God wants to move the furniture. You say, no, Lord, just stay in the garage. Leave, the, leave this place for me. Or oh, it's thorny. And thorny is the one. That's where I'm going to today, I hope. Thorny ground. That's the one that describes the nature of the response of the church to the Lord Jesus Christ in this time and in this age. Thorny ground. So we have soil. But just that we are also about other seeds. Not just the word. Mark 4.15. What did I say? The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so you can't neglect your food in your own house. Then listen to Mark 4.20. But those that were sown on the ground soil, or the, on the good soil, are the ones who hear the word and accept it. And bear fruit. 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold. Amen. Oh, come on. Somebody say 30 fold, 60 fold, and a hundredfold. Hallelujah. And so, this principle I just told you about the seed is one that you must keep in mind if your spiritual growth must matter this year. You must always remember that the seed is powerful, but the secret really is in the soil. It's not the seed, not just the seed, it's in the soil. Praise the Lord Jesus. How many know this song? There's a song that just came to my mind. This is my season for grace. For favor, William Murphy, this is my season to reap what I have sown. Who knows the song? Only me. Let's move on. <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. Listen to this. Listen to this. And he said, who's speaking? Who's speaking? Where's the love again at? Is it, is it still here or is it? Okay, amen. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps 
and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, he knows not how the earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in his sickle, because the harvest is come. What do we see there? The interaction between seed, ground, the process. And spiritual growth happens like that. I will be very worried about you if you are able to tell me how you grew physically. How you, if you tell me that it was when I had my 1,000th cup of milk, I suddenly noticed that my calcium levels were like this. I'll be very, very careful of you because that means you are hard. What do you do to grow, uh, to grow physically? You just eat. You just eat right. I think your physical, your physical um, uh, person is based on three things. Your sleep, your exercise, your food. That's the triangle. If anyone is out of shape, your life will be out of shape in some sense. If you're not eating well, but you're exercising well, and you're sleeping well, something will be right. But if all three are happening together, what will happen? It will produce. And growth is automatic like that. And that's why growth is organic. It's organic. It's not something that you walk into yourself. It's not something that you can like make yourself. And in Christianity, many times we stretch ourselves. When pastor was teaching us Sunday school earlier, to, earlier this morning, and I sat down there and I was listening to some of the things that he was saying, I realized that, you know, sometimes we do not pay attention to the fact that we also too can be the culprits that we are looking at, that we're looking for. And so we're making examples and we are in church, for example, in church, because the title of the Sunday school said hypocrites in church. And anybody, have you ever been hypocritical? I know that I won't get many hands. People don't admit this kind of thing in church. Ah, for where, pastor? Ah, no, only brother like me. Nah, I don't have time for those things. Have you ever been hypocritical? Anybody? Hmm? Your, your voice, your tongue changed. Your tongues changed when you saw the girl you wanted to marry. Maybe she was passing near you and coming near in church. Okay, most of you are married here now, right? But so she was just coming to church. Suddenly, you just saw her, you know. When I was, I, Mrs. Francis, then. The moment she walks into church and I'm leading praise and worship, that's when I go, My beloved is the most beautiful. You know, I want to run skills. I look at the keyboards and I say, let's run that skill we're practicing. I'm telling you the truth. I'm, she's shaking her hand and thinking, I'm telling you the truth. This is the truth. But at that time, someone will say, ah, this brother, whenever he leads praise and worship, heaven sets loose in the room. Don't play the song. Eh? If you play that song, if you play that song, we'll live here now. <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one of my favorite songs and it does, there's something it does to me. His sign is to, is to blame for it. I heard it from her for the, for the first time. I didn't know the song. I heard it from her. I said, ah, uh-uh. Where's this one from? Bikoni. And I found where it came from, you know. So I found the recipe and then I've chopped it off and I can, I have remixed and done it my way now. Amen. But you've been hypocritical before, haven't you? Have you lied before? I've told you the way to cure lying, right? Have I told you? You just go and say, Sister, that thing I told you yesterday is a lie. (laughs) That's the way to cure it. Quickly. The moment you say that to Sister Awo, of course, tomorrow, I'm standing here now in ministry. And she looked at me, she's like, but he lied yesterday. <laughs> Even fear not to agree with you again. When she asks you, say, Victor, where is that? You, you, just, you just arrange yourself. I just what? You just say the truth. The truth. That's how to cure lying. That's how to cure lying. You just go to the person and say, bros, sis, that thing I told you is a lie. <laughs> Let me tell you the real version now. The KJV of it. Praise the Lord Jesus. And why am I saying that? Because when Pastor Day was saying that, many times we tend to think about things that relate to spiritual growth. We can apply it to other people, but never bring it home. We can always think and say, ah, this person needs to change. They need to do serious work on themselves and change. But why you're saying that? The truth is that you also need to change. You also need to change. 
And especially when it comes to maybe a relationship like marriage, you know, there are times I blame my wife. I blame, 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 I blame. And God looks at me and said, Victor, but do you know the truth is that this mess, you two contributed to it in some way. So you have to get into it as well too. Fold your sleeves and pick up your mess. And clean up after you. And say sorry. And say thank you. Amen. The quickest way to solve issues in marriage, honestly, is serve the person. When you serve the person, you can't be angry at them. You can't be angry at them. Serve them. And a person who serves with all of their heart, they are easy to follow and work with. They are easy to work with. Because the person knows that your heart is in this thing. And so you're not afraid. Of anything. Oh God, there was a message that my wife shared with me. And when she shared the message, it was preached by Miles Monroe. I was listening to the message. I wrote her immediately. I said, please, babes, can you teach me how to cook? Because I can't cook. I'm not good in the kitchen or anything. If you want me to cook Ephesians and Colossians, ah, good, I can do that for you. But in the kitchen, I don't, know, I don't even know what it means like to chop onion. I've, I don't think, and I, it's not my mother's fault, so please be, be, be soft on her, okay? Don't blame her. But I think maybe it has a little to do with it. <laughs> As the only tender and beloved of the mom, you know, your mother wants you to have the best and all that. And so we grew up in an environment where it was more like, it was seen as a woman's thing more than a man's thing. And so when you enter the kitchen, you're like, what are you doing in the kitchen? Go and wash the car. And so I grew with that more and all that. So I can't cook. And every time in the house, I always kind of like long to be able to do something with my hands. And Pastor Miles Moreau was teaching in that message. She shared it with me and I listened to it and she, he was saying... It is not even in the scripture that the woman's place is to cook. Holy cows are moving now. Mm. Pastor, you are affecting my lunch now. So I can't go home now and just say, woman, where's my food? No. And really, when he began to actually give a little of example, the people, the people that did cooking, when Isaac was about to die, whose food did he ask for? He didn't ask for Rebecca's food. He asked Esau. Thanks, babes. He asked Esau, go bring venison. When Esau was hungry, who did he meet making food? Was it his mother? When Abraham saw the angels, he gave these two. So I can add mine now. I got recipe there now. You see how it works? When Abraham made the angels, who did he give the calf to? Servants. He says, go kill this fatted calf. To Sarah, I just said, make cakes. But she said, good thing. So it's not really, so cooking is not really a woman's thing in the home. And so if your husband here, you can cook. Good. Good. And maybe I should tell you, on the 3rd of March, we'll have love feasts to end the fast. You know, all those foods you've been thinking you want to eat when the fast is over. The 29th of February, we'll finish fast. On the 3rd of March, we'll celebrate our father in the Lord's birthday. We'll celebrate all the birthdays that are happening now that we cannot celebrate. And then we'll also celebrate that God has given us the grace to conclude fasting. And so I said to my wife, I said, you know, I think I, I should make it a men's affair because that day I'm going to wear apron. I will make something and I'll bring it to church. If you tell me that salt is too much, no problem. That's fine. <laughs> At least I'm open to feedback. I can take feedback and go home and work on myself. But I will make something, I'll bring it to church and I'll serve it and I will serve it. What am I doing is because I have taken recipe that it's not meant to be the woman's thing. That's why in the hospitality team, nobody, no man goes to Sister Jumoke or Sister Lamide to say, I want to join hospitality. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I know, brother, I know you're good in the kitchen. He, he taught us how to make banana loaf one time. Amen. I remember that meeting. He taught us, I went home, I made it, and I sent him a photo of it. Praise the Lord Jesus. My time is up, amen. I'll, I'll get back to this next week. Stand on your feet, everybody. Stand on your feet, everybody. I'll just go through the statements that I went through again. The seed is powerful. Say, the seed is powerful. But the soil is a secret. Now lift your hands toward heaven. Lift your hands toward heaven. This season is either you grow or you go. They normally say in the world, they say go big or go home. And so you can't show up to every single day in 2024 
and begin to blame somebody else and begin to blame circumstances and begin to blame things that you missed no 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 you're going to now go back and reach into your soil and i was explaining to you when i talked to you about the type of responses we give to what god does there's a response that comes from the wayside and I want you to pray on that wise and say, Father, if there's any place where the response of my heart is by the wayside, Lord, do some work in my soil. Come on, pray in the name of Jesus. You know where you are. You know where you are. If there's any place where God is speaking to you, there are relationships he's speaking to you about and telling you, you need to do this better. You need to maybe become a better person. You need to serve you need to maybe even walk away from the relationship. Please, don't, don't take this to mean, I mean, if it's a marital relationship, please don't take this to mean I'm saying you can walk away from your husband or your wife, please. That you do with counsel. You don't just do it because you, you, you think you heard God. But there are relationships that God may not want for you. There are things that he doesn't want for you. There are things, and there are places where you feel entitled because you think that I have learned enough by experience to know what to do. But God is saying, I need your experience out of the way. I need your experience out of the way. Please, brothers and sisters, lift your hands, uh, lift your voice and pray. And pray and say, Lord, I will not respond like one on the wayside. I won't respond like one on the wayside. I will respond by receiving correction, by receiving seed, by letting it fall into the soil of my heart. I will break up my fallow ground. Yes, I will turn it upside down. Wherever my heart is now stony, wherever my heart is thorny, wherever my heart is, uh, is rocky, wherever I haven't given the word, the attention that it deserves in my life. Father, today I break a association with such patterns now oh come on i wish somebody can pray in this place um, i need people who need to open their hearts now god is doing some work now god is doing some work now yeah yes 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 god is doing some work now god is doing some work now oh come on come on pray to him pray to him for a moment or two and then he spoke about those who the seed finds rocky ground or stony ground. And so as you say, Lord, as I remove myself from the response that is by the wayside, um, I will also not entertain anything that is rocky in nature. Wherever my heart is stony, wherever it is hard to bring me to the thinking of the word of God, um, wherever it is hard for me to submit myself uh, to the simple instructions like go, sit, stand, pray, do this, do that, call him, call her, whatever it is, today oh God, I remove, yes, all the fragments, all the debris, all the things that are in the way of your seed, finding soil, finding soil, oh, the soil is the secret, brothers and sisters, I said the soil is the secret, the soil is the secret, the soil is the secret, the soil, the soil is the secret. The soil is the secret. And then pray about, yes, everything that's a distraction. I say, Lord, wherever my energy, my loyalty, my time is going into various directions and I'm not paying attention and I'm just surrounded by thorns, although I have a soil, although I have something ready for seeds, but I still do have other things that are taking up and sucking up my attention. There's energy coming from my job. There's energy coming from my circumstances. There's energy being sucking sucking up um, yes even the little that i prepare for you oh god uh, and so in that way i have become so so splintered so yes distracted um, that i no longer know whether i'm coming or going today oh god um, i make my pursuit one thing and one thing only jesus said to martha he says martha martha you are careful about many things but only one thing is needful say lord i'm coming to the needful thing i'm coming to the needful thing um, in the name of the lord jesus come on somebody say with me i'm a good ground oh come on somebody say with me say i'm a good ground um, i mean to be a good ground means that i respond without being by the wayside without being rocky and without having thorns or distractions uh, somebody shout it again say i'm a good ground oh come on give god praise in this place uh, give god praise in this place give god praise in this place uh, I said, somebody give God praise in this place, sir. I said, somebody give God praise in this place, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Parting words, I'm not going to preach to you again. Please be seated and then we'll go on to other things before we close. So as you go into this week, I'll continue next week. Like I told you, I think I'll, I'll be on this for about, I, I, from my outline, I, I'm seeing about four weeks or so. Next week, I'm not preaching. Apostle Estrada is here next week because we have Covenants weekend. But the following week, I will be back with it. But let me leave you with some things. Did, did this bless you? Okay. So a word sown will become a harvest grown. Please write that down. A word sown is a harvest grown. Is a harvest grown. And December 31st will be key. December 31st. By the time we get to the 31st of December, you will see the harvest of all the words you said. Sister Lamide pointed it out and she said, this is the scripture we should all be mindful of. It says, we shouldn't be weary in well-doing for God is not what? Mocked. Isn't it? There's something I wrote down here that says, um, uh, let, let me say to you, and I'll, I'll refer to that scripture. The energy you sow is the energy you grow. So the question you should be asking yourself now is, I know some people sometimes say things like, I'm under attack. The question is, are you really under attack or are you reaping? Are you really under attack? Or maybe it's just that you're reaping. Because the truth is that the Bible says in that scripture that Sister Lamide referred to, it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Nobody, nobody ever makes a mockery out of the principle of God. I told you that God respects persons. God, God re doesn't, uh, he does what? He does not respect persons. But God respects principles. And is the reason, principles are the reason why you think God loves some people more than others. Is because the lives of some are actually screaming principle, principle, principle to the point that God will not ignore. While some are saying, this is the problem I told you I have with the grace message. The grace message will say, oh, do, do everything as you can. Don't worry, God has already accepted us. He, it's true, he has already accepted us, but we must prove to ourselves that we are him, that we are his. Your salvation is for you to prove to yourself. And how do you prove your salvation? By works. By works. James said, show me your faith. Without, you're claiming that, oh, faith alone is what I, he said, me, I'll show you that I have faith. Not by me saying it with my mouth. It's by the harvest, by the works that I get from the things that I do. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? And so, whatever a man sows is what he reaps. And so, rather than think and say, I'm under attack, think, am I reaping? The reason I'm saying that is because if you don't grow, you will go. You will go. The playing field won't be for you. You'll go. And there are people who already are on their way. They are going. They are going. And the speed at which they are going is even a drifting speed. So they are not in control of that speed. They are now carried by circumstances. And so all you can wait and all you can depend on them for is whatever the day brings. The birds of the air around them, they steal every word from them. Every word. Whatever is in the air steals word from them. If lack is in the air, it steals word from them. If hopelessness is in the air, it steals word from them. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so the energy you grow is the energy, the energy you sow is the energy you grow. Hallelujah. And so the last word I'll leave with you now and I close my iPad is, when it comes to sowing, this is why many of us sometimes don't see the change that we want to see. When it comes to sowing, we practice faithfulness, not perfection. We practice faithfulness. That's why there was 30, that's why there was 60, and that's why there was 100. 100 is the goal. But if you can't do 100, give God 30% attention this week. Just say, Lord, okay, for the sake of argument, I know that my mother-in-law, ah, you've not met her, Lord. If you meet her, you will know that she's a hard woman. But okay, I'll try and just love her 30% and see what happens. The results of 30% will increase your sowing to 60%. Isn't that how we do business? Where you sow and returns come back. 
I mean, there are some businesses that the, the profit from it is foolproof. You just, once they say it, like property, once you say that, you know that, that, that there's no argument in it. Profit will come. And so you have money now. Someone tells you, invest in this because money is coming. And you do it. The next time, what will you do? You will buy 10. Because you know that there is what? There is return coming from it. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so practice by going home today and sit down and say, where can I start faithfully? And start taking steps. Amen. Sunday after next, I'll come back and then we'll do a bit more with this. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise in this place, sir. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I promise the Lord that I will not rush this and I will not, I will not, even if I just do three lines in one service, that's fine because I want for us, like I said to you, we are in the business of unpacking, unpacking. And when you're unpacking, you are not in a hurry, isn't it? When you're unpacking, you're unpacking so that you can apportion and keep in the right order things in the place where they need to be. Amen. 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 Come on, shout back at me. Say, grow or go. Amen. So that's the motto for this week. Anybody who just behaves anyhow, just tell the person, grow or go.